Hello, and welcome to another edition of Bone Beautiful Me Spotlight. I'm your host, James Live Jr., and I'm wearing Bone Beautiful Blue. As you guys know, I do when I do my Bone Beautiful shows. Uh, just a little side note, the Bone Breakdown is on hiatus while AfterBuzz TV is not in the studio. And I'll be back at some time, hopefully in the near future. And of course, you have the audio version of Bone Beautiful Rewind. So I do all things Bone and Beautiful because I love the show so much. And I have somebody very important from the Bone Beautiful camp. He's here with me. One of the supervising producers, and you have to excite. There he is. You have that mug. Oh, I should, I should wear my hat. I have a hat and everything. I should wear my hat. I, I got that um, too. See, there you go. See, I have my stuff. Um, see, look at look at all that stuff. I think, he, I think he works there. I think it's like something going on there. He's one of the supervising producers. He's Emmy winner, Emmy award winner, Casey Kasperzak. Hello, James. It's great to be here. This is very I, exciting. We know each other online. It's our first time actually meeting. Meeting. Yes. Do this. <laughs> Um, but I want to tell you, I, want to always, I always ask this because right now we're going through a strange time period. How are you doing? So, you know, surprisingly okay. Um, we, uh, uh, I, miss, I miss working uh, at the office with all, you know, the cast and crew. But we get together on Fridays and we have a happy hour. So oh. it's kind of fun. We get to see the cast and, um, and uh, the office staff. And, uh, yeah, we hang out for an hour. So that kind of fills the void. Um, been very busy. Um, you know, working on the show, surprisingly, about, you know, about what's coming up in our special themed weeks and um, trying to get caught up in some, some personal things like uh, eating better, trying to exercise with this extra free time. So um, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, I can probably go another three weeks and <laughs> then, 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 uh, then I think we'll reach the breaking point. So are, are your drawers organized in your kitchen? Uh, um, I would say yes, but surprisingly, the next day they're completely disorganized. I don't know what I'm like. What happened? Because you're like, well, I'm looking for that spatula. I don't know what's going on. A little on. bit, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But a lot of folks are. I'm, I've been actually going through my stuff, going, wow. Like today, for example, folks, I have a lavender microphone. I didn't know I had. I'm like, oh, I could use one of these. I know those right. in there. So I'm finding things all over my house because you have that time to do that. I'm trying, I'm trying to, I, I want to get to this Star Wars puzzle my nieces and nephew gave me for my birthday. So I'm thinking, that I never, when they gave me the puzzle, I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, I have free time to do a puzzle. But now I'm like, I'm going to do this puzzle. Okay, see, I'm gonna show you it's like the puzzle I'm challenge. Of doing the Mandalorian Baby Yoda puzzle. Very, oh, Baby Yoda. Nice. Very it's nice. Called, it's called The Child, folks. I know what he's called. I watched the series. But I'm doing have a Star you, Wars Have movie. you done, have, have you made the puzzle? I'm still making it. I'm still in it. Okay, well, oh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna challenge you online to finish our Star yes. Wars puzzle. It's only 500 pieces, and it's harder than I thought, Casey. That, that looks hard. So I'm doing it right now. I took, I set pictures online. I'll post some pictures online, for people. But I'm working on it over there, and I'm working on it. It's a little harder than I thought. I got the whole round. I got the whole thing around you know, the frame. That one's definitely good. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yes. So you're home. You drink fine. It's good. So I always want to ask that. I know it's been a weird time. I've been home 37 days, as much as this, you know, as this has been. I haven't left anywhere. So, just to go to the store, maybe. I've, I haven't gone to the store. I haven't. I haven't left. My Wait, property. you have not left in, in 37, 37 days. days. I I'm, saw you posted a picture outside, so you do get yes. some air. Oh, I have a great garden. I have a huge okay. garden. Oh, right. I'm very fortunate. And and the length of my property is the length of a block. Oh, okay. I'm down here in Inglewood. I, I, I lucked out. I got great. I got big house property. Yes. Yeah. So I have not left. I have food delivered. I've had Instacart, uh, Amazon Fresh. So James Lodge has not left his property in okay. 36 days. Mm -hmm. And you're also a super organizer. Yes, I am. Super organizer. I know. I need to, I need to have you come over and help me. <laughs> I, I, love live West, I live over in Westchester. Oh, you're right. So we're neighbors. We're neighbors. Oh, seriously, yeah. seriously, you're right by me. I'm in Westchester all the time. I need to get yeah. a haircut. That's why I get my haircut in Westchester. I need a haircut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool story. But yeah, I'd love to. I'll at some point. We'll do that. Um, but yeah, I'm an organizer. You guys will notice that I'm a professional organizer. 11 years in the business. Um, yeah. And I, I, I love it. I love, I love helping people transform their lives and put systems in their place that actually work for them. That's awesome. That's it's really a tight, I feel like it's just, it's a, it's a great way of giving back to me. Well, so, once we can hang out again, I'm going to. Well, yes. Definitely. Yeah. So, okay. So, okay. So, so Bold and Beautiful. This is the thing. It's so funny. Bold and Beautiful. Now they've, you know, episodes are not just, no, you guys are not on set. You're not, you're not filming anything, right? I mean, this is an unprecedented time for the history of the show. I mean, I've been here during a lot of, you know, um, stressful times like the writer strike in 2007, 
Uh, that was a very stressful time about, you know, keeping the show on the air, but nothing quite like having to, you know, um, shut down the studio like this. So it has all been very fluid. When, when the, when the uh, quarantine happened, you know, we didn't know if it was going to be maybe two weeks and then it kept getting extended. And so uh, we were always hopeful that we would continue original episodes, but as it became more clear that this was a very serious health crisis, then we, we um, uh, had to look for different ways to make the show um, unique and you kind of make it special for the viewers at home. And I think, I think what uh, our first week that's gonna kind of do a preview starting uh, Friday tomorrow, uh, the, the third, uh, what is that, the 24th, yes. is um, a, a kind of our Monte Carlo fashion challenge. And then that's gonna kick off Escape to Monte Carlo week. And uh, it was a lot of fun going back and reliving all these sure. fantastic yeah. times we've had in Monte Carlo. So, and, and what's really neat is that for the first time ever, yeah. Uh, is the CBS premiere is what we're calling it yeah. is uh, the uh, becoming bold and beautiful, which is a two part uh, behind the scenes documentary slash reality show uh, detailing how we actually put the show together on location. People love behind the scenes. That's a smart idea. Well, and I, I don't know if you recall episode 7,000 that was um, uh, our special tribute episode where we kind of showed, you know, the actors talking about, um, how we put okay. the show together there. And that people, that was really, really popular. And so from that, I always looking for ways to how do we share the show with our fans in, in a more, um, you know, exclusive way. And I think this is really, really cool. And what I'm excited about most about this is that Brad Bell, uh, executive producer, head writer, um, is a part of these specials and you get to see him hands on. He's not just uh, a writer in the office, uh, cranking out scripts, but he's actually, when we go on location, these are his brainchild. And so if we come, if we hit a, a, a roadblock, he's right there to help keep it going. So it's, it's going to be neat to, for the audience to see Brad and how he, um, how he works with all of us. Explain to people, because I know this already personally, but explain to some people who don't realize why Monte Carlo is special to the Bold and the Beautiful. Right. So uh, every year, uh, Prince Albert has a television festival. Uh, uh, Monte Carlo Television Festival, and it's uh, this year was celebrating its 50th year, uh, but unfortunately, uh, I believe it's been postponed. But what's so great about it is the Prince invites cast members to Monaco to celebrate, and uh, we're always nominated and win the uh, Outstanding Television Audience Award. So that's so so it was Brad's, you know, vision that hey we have our actors going to Monte Carlo, why don't we shoot some scenes from the show? So, and it started in 2013, uh, our first location shoot with uh, Don Diamond and Catherine Kelly Lang, who were going to Monte Carlo. Yes. And Brad uh, asked myself and Cindy Pop, uh, our longtime director, if we would go to and try to shoot some footage of them on location. And so uh, there was no expectations. We got to Monte Carlo and, um, we were gonna you know, shoot at the palace. We had that worked out. And then Kelly met this woman who owned a yacht. And a very long story short, we find ourselves shooting on the yacht and, and, and we, we, we Skyped back with Brad and we said, we got this yacht. And, and Brad said, okay, we'll call it Bill Stella Maris. And, you know, and, it, and so now that became a character for so long. It's like the Stella Maris and Bill Sky, skyscraper, right? Like those are his, his boys. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so it's just kind of, and then, then the next time we went was when Wyatt and Hope got married on the Stella Maris and they took the leap of faith. And then in 2016, and then in, in, uh, with, uh, Steffi chasing after Quinn. Yeah. And that was, that oh, was, oh my God. I love that whole thing. Yes. It was good. Oh my gosh. And then, and then, uh, a couple of years ago with the fashion challenge, which was just, it, it was incredible. When you see the episode back on television, what you don't see is how hot it was shooting that fashion show. It was over a hundred degrees on this pier, oh. and, um, uh, and 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 like Don Diamond's wearing a full-on suit. So, but it was it all came out. It, it in the end, it all worked out. Really it was well. like, uh, can I really complain? I'm an actor. I get to be in Monte Carlo, and I'm filming a show that I love. Like, I mean, so I'm hot. Okay, yeah. so I, I wear a suit. <laughs> I, mean, you I, know. I know exactly. No, no complaining. No complaining. Yeah, what can you say? 
Um, because I want to know that the show is shown internationally. I mean, like you guys are big in Australia. I mean, you're big in other places in the world. So I think that's one of the few things about the four soaps that are left that this show is like, you know, it's a, it's much bigger than just the Los Angeles, just for Los Angeles, the USA audience. Yeah, we, it's, uh, we have that kind of, um, uh, advantage to go to our territories where the show is popular, like Italy, uh, Australia, and the Netherlands, France, yeah. And, and promote the show and also, you know, uh, show the sites and, and shoot the show on the sites. I mean, a lot of these episodes could happen in our stage 31, but Brad chooses to do it in front of the Eiffel Tower. So, you know, and I'll tell you, James, like, I've, I don't, are you watch, have you watched the show from day one? Uh, I, yes. Yeah. So, okay, maybe I maybe watched it from year three or year four. <laughs> I'm a little um, older than you are so but I was I was yeah. grown when it when it came out so yeah so, but when I was growing up and I would see the show go to these different locations and go to Italy I always thought like wow that would be really cool to work for a show that travels you know to different parts of the world and um I you know never never thought I'd actually get to work for the bold and beautiful let alone be able to help produce these international location shoots so for me, every time I go to a location, it's always kind of like I pinch myself because it's really a, a, a dream come true. Well, you know, it's one of those things, and I say the same thing when I get to talk to my favorite actors from a show that I watched for years, and I get to talk to them, and I get to interview them on my shows. I don't take it for granted. I don't take it for granted at all. I just feel like there are, this is, it's a, an example to people who watch us, watch you, watch us, watch yeah. show. You know, life can happen that way in your life. Whatever you're going for, whatever you hope for and wish for and desire can happen. Sometimes through hard work, sometimes through luck. I mean, it's, it's nothing, nothing is impossible. And that's what you're showing us that you grew up watching this and then all of a sudden now you're doing it. Yeah. And, and it's, um, you know, it was just, it was timing. It was a lot of hard work. And it was, you know, honestly, I, I attribute it a lot to Brad Bell for, you know, believing in me and mentoring and, um, and it's been a really great place to work for. I, I say this, I, every time I interview soap people and people on soaps, I always say, can you please relate to people? Soap people, crew, cast, directors, producers, writers are some of the hardest working people in entertainment, aren't they? Well, we do 250 episodes a year, right? I mean, so I always say your favorite Netflix show maybe makes 13 episodes. So we're doing maybe, two, like maybe 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 eight. most if that, that's you know so um, it is it is you know it's exhausting when I looked back at all these Monte Carlo shows and I talked to Cindy I'm like who directed all of them I'm like did we do all that 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 is exhausting so um, but you know you're always you're always just ready for the next show you know so um, but I do it and, and the cast they when we shoot, they, they have to be up at 6 a.m., you know, for hair and makeup, and then they're working all day doing publicity, doing their festival responsibilities, and then we turn around and do it the next day. So, um, but again, like you said, they're in Monte Carlo, so it all, it all works out. Yeah, like, what are you gonna say? I mean, oh, but, okay, but I don't wanna take away that it is hard work. I mean, that is the whole thing. I mean, I'm making fun, but like, yeah. it is hard work. I mean, that's the whole point. It's, I mean, they're, they're, they're learning 60 pages of dialogue a day and, and trying to go out and, hi, everybody, I'm Twins representing Bold and the Beautiful to folks that may even not even understand them in English. There's interpreters, I'm sure. Right, right. right. So, it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, I'm, like, we're laughing, but it's a lot. I, I respect soap work so heavily, and you know this. I mean, I, said, I respect yeah. all the shows. And I just, I want people, I just want people to know, because I have people who watch my shows who don't watch soaps. I want them to know this stuff is not for the faint at heart. It's really hard work to put on a show almost every single day. Well, and you know, every, every couple of years we have a big fan event, which, have you ever been to the fan event? No, I haven't. I, well, you need to, well, we don't, we'll have it next year. Okay, uh, yeah. And, and uh, 20, uh, 2021. Yes. Wow, that's weird to say. I, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> but, um, that always reinvigorates us because, you know, as hard as we work, it's always the fans that make it like so rewarding because they, how appreciative they are of everything and how much this is a part of their life that it really isn't work because we're, we're, we love doing it for the fans. And that's what going on location too, we get to see international fans and what the show means to them. And really that makes it all worth, worthwhile. Every soap actor that I've met from Bold and the Beautiful over the years has been amazing. Every single person I've met from Ron Moss. All of them? 
Oh, may, oh all of them? You can, any, or no, 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 there's no, there's no tea. I don't have any tea to give you. No, so far, um, no, on other soaps, I can tell you some tea, but not on this one. No, well, and that, that really comes from the Bell family and Brad Bell from the top down. And that, that's the culture. I mean, everybody from like Lauren St. Victor to Aaron D. Spears to Heather Tom okay. to uh, Annika Noel to, Matt, to Pearson Fode, who was on before, to, to Ron Moss. I mean, everybody I've ever met and interviewed from Bold okay. Beautiful has been Sean Kane, and they've all been great. I, I, other shows I've had some feelings with, but this show, no. No, seriously, I mean, I mean I, I'd be very serious. This show, everyone's been super nice and it's eager to talk about their role on the show, which means their commitment to your show, it shines through. Like they're really happy to be on. They're happy to do the storylines or they're just doing it. And I think, not, and I, I interview, I've interviewed thousands of people over the years and not everybody feels that way. Some people come in and just like, you can tell they're dead behind the eyes and I'm just promoting what I'm doing. Just like, you know, your people come on with yeah. enthusiasm and talk about their shows. Well, it, it is, um, it's exciting. I mean, you know, we, we do have, we have a good time here, you know, and uh, there's no egos. No, the egos are all checked outside the stage door. So, so I want to ask you, because somebody asked me this, and people always ask me all the time, well, what is a producer? What they, so what is a, what is a supervising producer? Like, what do you do? Well, yes. So <laughs> that is a very good question because, um, Producers, whether it's in a film or, or, you know, a television show, it can be very different things, especially a producer for a soap opera can be very, very different. So um, what I, I always say, I don't write the show. I look for ways to make it better. So my role at The Bold and the Beautiful is to take the script that Brad Bell writes and enhance it, whether that is going on location, whether that's a special, special effect, um, whether adding music to the show. I just look for ways to creatively kind of bridge the gap between Brad, the director, the writer, and, and bring everything together. So that's really where, uh, and in post-production, I am uh, love, to, love to help edit the montages and fine tune the editing. Uh, so I kind of I move all around. So uh, my title is super supervising producer. Ed Scott is also supervising producer. So his job, he supervises the stage and um and is you know, in the booth when we're shooting the show and is communicating with the director and the cast and i'm i'm communicating with ed and running around the building doing doing all my little casey projects <laughs> <laughs> good that's a good answer i want to, i was just curious i know producers have different roles and yeah but people people ask me all the time what's a producer of a show well, and it's sort of like um in 2008 i'd been with the show five years and i was a production coordinator and i went to Brad and I pitched him this idea for uh, a new position for me as associate producer. And Brad said, I think that would be a good idea. So well, let's see how it goes. And then I, so I kind of really created my role here at the company. That's a cl as my grandmother would say, a closed mouth don't get fed. And apparently it got fed. <laughs> well, I always say, if you want something in life, yeah. you have to ask for it, you know, you know, and if you said no, that's fine. You know, but, um, uh, so, and then, then what was like the bonus of the job was all these location shoots that then Brad started saying, well, let's go back to Point Doom where Brooke and Ridge got married. You know, let's go to um, Venice. Let's go to these little beaches and then let's go to Aspen. Let's go to Cabo. And um, I, was, I was very fortunate to help make that a reality. <laughs> I love it. Uh oh, did I freeze my Yeah. It's a, everybody knows all these things. It freezes a little much. So, okay. coming bold and the beautiful, it's a two part thing. Is that it's making a step preview. People are nosy. People like to see behind the scenes. I try to tell people that all the time. The fans want to know everything, as you know this. They want to know everything. Yeah. So, I'm great. so, so, what more do we expect? So, what more do we expect to see? That I mean, like I said, behind the scenes, we're going to see the actors getting ready, kind of, or them, you know, kind of, you know, maneuvering. Yeah, I think it's a fun episode, whether you're a fan of The Bold and the Beautiful or just a fan of the entertainment industry, to kind of see what are the steps that go into a show. Like, you're, what's neat is you're going to see these episodes um, on, that actually were produced, you know, while we're making the behind the scenes. Then, then on Wednesday, Thursday, you're going to see the shows on air. So you can kind of see the, how it was put together and then the final product. And there's things that you'll never know you know, uh, happened because, uh, you know, that's not in the final show. So it's kind of neat to see there's all these problems and it's as a producer also, it's how do you handle these problems? How do you, how do you handle these problems? So the director can do her job, you know, and make the cast happy, 
you know, uh, and court, you know, doing all these little things so that the show can keep going. And um, so you're going to see see all that from kind of my perspective and Cindy Pop's perspective. You're also going to see how, you know, Jacqueline McKinnis Wood kind of just rolls with everything, and you're going to see her fashion at the parties, and uh, you're going to get you're going to get a lot of fl flavor and taste for things that you wouldn't normally see. And so smart. Yeah. So I. And, the, you know, location is what, like you said, no other show is doing. So this is a way to uh, do both. And I, I really, I'm really interested to see how the, 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 the public responds. We had an opportunity to air this three years ago on Pop TV. Oh, okay. So, um, it, but that's a much smaller audience. So now I'm really hoping people tune in on Monday and Tuesday. And check yeah, it out. Well, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, think that, I think it's such a smart idea to, to branch out a little bit. Because uh, we have to be very creative right now, but for, until for the unforeseeable future, just until right. whenever we're able to come back. But we gotta be creative. And some shows, I'm watching it doing things that are very creative, making us, you know, I think outside the box. Yep. Um, uh, it is. It's it's a it's an opportunity to to educate viewers who maybe haven't watched the show um, from the beginning, but maybe have just jumped in maybe five six years ago. So to kind of show them some of the backstory. Um, maybe if you're new to the show and you see Quinn and Eric together, but you don't know how they actually hooked up, well, these episodes kind of give you that backstory about why their kind of initial get together was so scandalous, and it, it kind of gives you, kind of fills in the gaps for a yeah. lot of a lot of our newer viewers and the people that have been are with us from the beginning. They're going to love it too. What is one thing you've learned about yourself while working on the show for almost what 17 years? Wow. Yes, 17. Um, uh, that is, okay. So I, what have I learned about myself? Mm, that is a good question. I, I have a couple of life philosophies. And uh, uh, one is just because you're having a bad day doesn't mean you sacrifice tomorrow. And so for me, that means like, let's say today I'm having a really bad day. Uh, a week from now, something, something, uh, my life's going to be different. So let's not dwell on the fact that there's a problem today. Let's build some things down the, down the road to, to make things better so that eventually it will be better. So if I, if I kind of look, look ahead and not dwell on the present, then it keeps me going. So I'd say if there's problems, you know, uh, whether personal or at work, you know, I, I always try to stay positive that way. Um, like the that. other thing is, is that uh, it, really, it really is a team effort. You know, nobody can do it by themselves. You have to work together. So as much as I try to be a control freak and I want to do everything myself. <laughs> you can't. You can't. You need, you need to work together. So, um, and, and, you know, and, and if you let people help you, like the people want to help you. Like I remember when I first became a producer, the production designer said, I can help you. Like I can, you know, tell me what you need and I can help you. And that was very good advice because uh, you're right. I don't have to think about everything. I just need to, you know, activate the team. So yeah. delegate, delegate, delegate. I know a good producer, a good person in charge surrounds themselves with people who, who know what they're doing. That's, that's what very that's true. The, very true. That's always all the time. It's not. It's not about you know. Yeah. You know. Um, I'm in charge. I know everything. No, I don't know everything, and I can't do everything. But you can do this. You can do that. It makes you seem smart, also. But that's you true. have to also, um, like, keep a straight like face. Like everything's under control. And then when you go behind the curtain, oh my God, what are we gonna do? Oh, I got it covered, Brad. We're all good. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, trust me, I, as, as, a, as a host and producer stuff all the time, I'll be in the studio, because now we're at home right now, but I'll be in the studio, and I'll get in the ear from my engineer and producer. Um, they're running late the last minute. You need, to do, you need to do an open for like 10, like, and you're sitting uh -huh. there going, okay, and they're going, we're about to count you down in three seconds. I'm like, gosh, three, two, and hi, I'm James Lydie. I mean, you have, to, you have to like keep that, I know that, I know that face, Casey. I know that, trust me, I know the right. face. It's like, okay, <laughs> we're, we're good. Okay. We're going to be fine co-hosts. Everything's, everything's good. Everything's, we're going to work it out. And you just kind of, you just work it out. I mean, I, I know that face. You're, I, but you're so good on camera. You're like, you're, you, you're, you could do the whole show without any guests. <laughs> I mean, that is a real gift. 
Well, thank you. No, I, I've been doing this for like 13 years. I love it. I, I, I found it. I mean, I fell into it. I went to a dinner party and someone said, you should do this. And I'm like, sure, why not? Um, I thought I wanted to be an actor at one point. Okay. okay. I've done a few things over the years, but. We we'll have to look for your, for when you can be on Bold and Beautiful then. I would love to. We got, okay, folks, you hear this right now. I, I'll come on. I'll, I'll come, I'll, I will be in the background. I'll say a one word, whatever. I'll do whatever, you, whatever you want, whatever, whatever character. Done. Done. I know, I know some people. I can talk to some people. <laughs> I've, done, I've done a few acting things. I've done a few things here and there. It's, it's fun. But I, I do like, the, I like talking to people. Some people being nosy. I'm nosy in a good way. I'm nosy. I want to know right. what's going on. I no. want to know what makes people tick. That's why I like doing this. That's why I like being a host and I like being an interviewer. I just love, and I love your show. I mean, your show has always been very Los Angeles. Okay, I'll ask you some questions. Ask me some questions. I'm here. So you, you watch from the very beginning. From the very beginning. So now, are you Team Brooke or Team Taylor? I'm Team Brooke. You this are not from the Valley. I've but always see. I always identified for. She's the wrong side of the track. She just wants love, Casey. That's all she wants. But are you okay? Let me. I'm. I, I'm. I'm both their teams. But are you Team uh, Brooke and Ridge or Brooke and? I mean Taylor and Ridge. Well, here's what's funny. So if you put those two together, yeah. I actually liked Taylor and Ridge for some reason. Yeah, me too. I've always felt Kelly, like Kelly does not like it when I say that. But. I love Catherine Kelly. She's so nice. Uh, we have we have the equestrian thing in common. We like to ride horses. Oh, cool. So me, me and her, we talked about that. Um, and Tracy Melkor, same thing. We, we talk all the time. We always talk about horse riding, horseback riding. It's one of our things. Um, I always like I like the I, I kind of like the whole dark haired family thing. I kind of like they're all dark haired, mm -hmm. and she's the doctor, and, and they they had, they had a great dynamic. And I thought. Brooke, I always thought Brooke and Rick, see, I'm a Bill and, and Brooke fan. Okay. I'm a real fan. I really, I really am. I, I, loved, I loved them together. Um, and, and I get a lot of flack for it, of course, but I don't care. I like Brill. Um, but my thing is, Brooke and Rich to me should have always been, yeah, they'll run shows orbits all the time. There's going to be some feelings, but I don't feel like they should be together. That's kind of my thing. They, should, they shouldn't yeah. be together. They should either long to be together, kind of, or always just have this thing where they kind of have affection for each other. It had been around for so long at this point. I mean, they really are family at this point. That's why. Well, I was, I was, yeah, and I, I agree with that. I, I, I love Taylor and Rich. I'm, I love Brooke and Nick. I did. Well, you know, let me some Jack Wagner. I mean, I mean, come on. Yeah, I thought, I thought uh, Jack or Nick, Nick brought something out in Brooke that, you know, her, her fun side. And well, yeah, because, because Nick Roy was, was a different kind of man. It wasn't like the others. He wasn't buttoned down right. and like and, and, and stiff or anything. He was a different kind of man. And I, you're right. He brought other sides. You I mean, know, it's funny. You guys had for a second, even though it was a marriage of convenience, I love me some Rick Hurst. And when you guys had him play Whip Jones, mm -hmm. I liked I liked his character. I, I, I liked it. I mean, it didn't last. You know, it was off and on. It last time, but I liked his character, and I kind of was intrigued by them a little bit too. Right, and especially the the Whip and Deacon. Kind of oh, rivalry was you know, there. You go. I mean, you, you know, I'm friends with Sean Kanan, so I mean, that, I love I mean, anything he does. I just, I just bow to him. But I love you know, Deacon's such a great character, also. But now, are you now uh, Hope and Liam or Steffi and Liam? I'm, I'm hoping Liam. Actually, okay. Okay. I, I feel again. I also the same way. I feel like Steffi and Liam should have affection for each other. They are kind of family at this point. Um, I feel, like so, I feel like they're so mismatched to me on some weird level. I mean, I, I hold Jacqueline McInnes in such high regard, first of all, anyway, because she's just like super beautiful and talented. Um, but I always like the whole good guy with good girl. I've always kind of liked that. Um, and I, I feel like that doesn't happen very often. Usually it's like, you know, the opposite attract and all that kind of stuff. Like, right. what if we put those two together? They're actually similar. Mm -hmm. and put them together and give them conflicts in other ways. I thought, why not? But I, thought, I, I feel like Steffi's exciting. Of course, Liam would like that. Of course. I mean, that's kind of a yeah, thing. Yeah. But I, I feel like she should have somebody else. She goes somewhere else. I didn't mind her and Bill, actually. I didn't mind that. I didn't mind. It's controversial. Okay. okay. Didn't, mind. didn't mind that. <laughs> I thought I, it was interesting. I, I, uh, at the fan event last summer, uh, I did a QA and a and and I asked, you know, Don, if, if he thinks that Kelly is, you know, Bill and Steffi's and the audience went crazy. Yes. Like they yes. really want Kelly to be Bill and Steffi. Well, it's so funny. So, I, um, see, I don't want that to happen though, because I kind of like, see, one of the things you guys did really well, I loved Steffi's speech. I loved when she was like, we're going to do differently than our parents. 
that was over when she was talking to hope it was like that was such we all we all stood up and applauded you know in our homes going that made sense i like that they were kind of doing that it was like a the next generation but well, we're gonna do it differently and so i don't mind kelly being liam's i mean raising together but just be differently i i hope that can happen and that hope and Steffi kind of care about each other and i mean again they're all they're all it's that whole mixed up they're all kind of family so i hope if i know fans want kelly to be I, I, and that's good conflict obviously but i feel like i like that they're almost the same as taylor and brooke 2.0 but not quite i don't right mind. right right no that's that is kind of neat to have that you know generation the same and who knows if kelly and uh will be the next, you know, the next, next generation, leading the next generation with oh, that. Yeah. Kelly, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I would love that. I mean, I, th I feel like in some ways that's fun to watch and you're still drawing on history. And I think it's a lot of things that some of the soaps sometimes forget about, you guys don't, but some forget about that it's these are multi-generational. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us have watched at this point, the, the, you know, I got now the third generation of the show, that we should, we want to see the similarities. We want to be able to compare a little bit and contrast. Yeah, we like that. You guys do that. We like that. Now, what is what is your all time favorite uh, episode or moment from Bold and Beautiful? Well, it goes back, and I said this the other day on my show. It goes back to the Lauren and Sheila days. Okay. I thought that crossover was one of the most brilliant things that both soaps did. That she dies dies on Young and the Restless, and then comes on to Bold and the Beautiful. And I thought. And my, my, my favorite scenes, it turns out to be that actually it was a dream, was Lauren and, and, and Sheila fighting, but it turns out it, was, it, it didn't happen or whatever, it didn't happen. But that whole exchange, they finally see each other, they finally come together as a knockdown, drag out, you know, thing. And I just, I love Kimlin Brown. I just love her to death. She's such a nice person. Um, and that's just one of my all time favorite scenes. But I gotta tell you, a close second is when Stephanie finally breaks. Give me some, I mean, some Susan Flannery. I mean, talk about acting brilliance. And she has hope. This is long, I mean, not hope, but it has Brooke a long time ago against the wall. And as her, just like, you put me to the breaking point. Like, she's like, she just had had it with this little, she's like, she's like a little gnat to her. Just like, you just, you just, you keep this, you know, sleep with everybody in my family. And you're just like, oh, she had had it. I thought, but that was such a very climactic, long time coming moment. Mm. And then after, it was a very defining moment. And then after that, you know, there's little fights in there, but then it became kind of frenemies. And then it kind of came, like you came to love and appreciate. I feel like the, the natural maturation of the relationship was really played out. And, and actually that was, and to me, their relationship is my favorite of all time on the show with the Stephanie Brook thing. Because yeah. it really did, we got to see all parts of it until, until Susan Flannery had retired. We got to see all of it. Well, it'd be fun to have a themed week be Stephanie and Brooke, you know, and see their, their, their trajectory of enemies and then coming together as, you know, accepting each other. That um, last scene where she's there with her and she died. I, I feel like the, the, the whole thing is, yeah, it's about love and men and women, all that kind of stuff on there. But, you know, a lot of us like the female relationships. We like to see the push and pull and what's going on. Those are some of the favorites. You know, other soaps have people like this, this, like the frenemy thing and the whatever. We love seeing that because it's just so over the top a little bit, but also real in some ways. And we, I want to, I love to see that. I love that kind of stuff. And I, I, I gotta say, there are two scenes in the last couple of years that I applauded on my show that we had to show it over and over again. One, I'm taking the, note. The slap heard round the world right. when Steffi slapped Quinn and it was so good. Oh my gosh, she slapped the S out of her. So that was good. And then I would say recently. In Monte Carlo? In Monte Carlo. Okay, that's all right. Good. She's like, and her voice got hoarse. She was like, no, you will not be able to with my grandfather. I was oh, like, we show, we sh you're going to love then uh, on uh, episode two on April 28th when we show Becoming Bold and Beautiful part two. Yes. That's all about the slap scene in there. Okay, good, good. Oh, seriously, if you go back to my bold breakdown episode of that week, I showed it up. That was, we made fun of the slap. I was into the slap. I was like, that slap was like, she slapped the S out of her. Um, and then one of my other, my other, one of my favorite scenes regards Sheila. And when Sheila and Quinn, when Sheila came back, and when she said, what'd you call me? And she was like, excuse me, did you call me a bitch? And she goes, I called you a bitch, bitch. And I was like, and we're all like crazy upon crazy. This should be good, and it was good. It was it was everything I needed. I was like, "Thank you, God. Thank you, Bone Beautiful. For everything I need." I, I, well, and I, I love me some Sheila too. And I um I would I was like trying. I was like, Brad, what if what if you made Quinn 
and uh, Sheila sisters. Like somehow like that, you know, that, would, that would instantly explain Quinn, right? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. when, when he was bringing Kimberlyn back, like what if, what if, you know, Quinn said something like, you know, uh, tell mom hello or something. And it'd be like, it would be, what? If you said, I would have jumped out of my seat and been calling Eva going, girl, what's going on? Like, right. I'd be like, you got well, to. That was, and it, speaking of Eva, it was so great that we were able to keep that a secret. The whole. Yeah. The you whole did. Oh her. my goodness. I was like, when she turned off, I was like, that's Sheila. Like, I never guessed a million years. Never guessed a million years. You know, we had a sneaker in the building, and I was so worried that somebody from Young and the Restless across the hall would see her, and it would get leaked. But no, we, we kept it right up to that episode, and then it was... You didn't know you did. The summer yeah. Sheila was so much fun. So oh I know she was running for office, and there were other things going on with her. So, I mean, it was yeah. kind of, she had a lot of things going on. But, but you never know. Sheila's, Sheila's out there. Oh, and I, got, and I have to say this to you, because you're one of the producers, because on my show, I'm always talking about her. I love me some Denise Richards. I think she's such a breath of fresh air as Shauna. She she's is hot, hotty totty. Denise is the is the coolest person. You know, she joined the cast and she fit right in. And I, you know, the way she portrays Shauna is so much fun. You know, I just I want her. I want her wrist together. I like. I like. She's a breath of fresh air. Oh, of course person. you do, because you want you don't you don't want Brooke with well that, you want Taylor with Ridge, but uh, that, yeah. Exactly, but I like I like the character. I think she's a great character, and uh, and I my hope one day is to have her on one of my shows. That's another one of my my dreams to have to sit down and talk to her. I love her so much, love her so much. So I, she's yeah, it's I can't say enough good things. I know, I know she's good. You can't say but enough. again, she she would yeah she would fall under the checklist of everybody's been great. Like if you yeah, see, see there you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. But no, I I love the show. I mean, I just think I think there's some great moments, and I think. Um, and I used to love when Jennifer Finnegan was on the show and she played Bridget and I do love Ashley Jones as well. I'm glad you guys bring her back. I'm glad you guys bring her back on occasion. That's really great. The Logan girls. I love when the Logan sisters are just talking. When they're just talking and they're talking about life. It just seems, they seem like real sisters. Like, and I've met well, two out of the three. I haven't met, I haven't met um, Jennifer Garris yet, but I've met the other two. Oh, okay. Uh, I know Heather Tom, she's been on my show and I know Kevin Kelly Lang, but I haven't met. Uh, and I don't know if people know this, but they're like sisters outside the show like at home like they go out to dinner they zoom together like they're they're not just sisters on screen but they're really like logan girls outside of the show it's really cool i love it i do i love it in their performance too it shows in their performance and we all like we like when they're sitting around kind of talking about life and joking. ever since ever since you know have katie had the heart transplant like the logan girls really bonded over storm's death right like it's really it's really was cool and then they did all those photo shoots Yes. together it was that with their logan girls are a lot of fun you like that so i like i like that i think it's i i love the fact you guys really do and i gotta tell you what a find in annika nicole and matthew atkinson they both been on my show they're both amazing and i, I want to tell you matthew atkinson plays creepy like nobody's business i was like he and he's so nice and funny in real life so it's like yeah. the whole opposite of that but like on the show you guys did such a great job with him and he really carried they, they both carried that storyline and I, I really don't think that was the intention um, for Thomas when uh, Brad brought Thomas back to have Thomas be creepy, <laughs> but it just sort of evolved. And Matthew is a really talented actor and in, in, in him with, with Douglas and Hope, like it's so much fun to watch. Was it Henry Samry is his name? Yeah, Henry. Mm -hmm. What a find, what a find. Gosh. He upstaged half the cast. I was like, he's, he's so good so good um you know when we when brad had to cast that part we had a lot of uh younger uh boys come in and you know it was it was a very nerve-wracking decision because it was like you knew it was going to be a big role but henry is like totally knocked it out of the park H hands down and i wouldn't be surprised if you get dominated for an emmy next year he's he's good he's good he's good he was submitted he was submitted okay for for, for younger actors or younger it's a younger performer this year yeah, no, he's he's definitely I, on our show again. We always like, God, this this kid is really good. Like he's upstaging the actor, adults. He's delivering his lines with just like with ease and just like gets the emotion out there. And plus, he's a little little cute thing. He's so good. Beth, you know, Beth or what, what is it? Beth is alive. Beth is alive. But the one episode we made fun of a little bit, we had a laugh with. Yes. The dancing okay. Goblin, let me hear dancing it. goblin, dancing ghost. We had a little, we had a laugh about oh, that. Let, okay. 
<laughs> I'm going to take responsibility for the goblin. Okay, that was on me. Uh, that was scripted. That there's a projector and the <laughs> goblin, and so I, I, I. That's one of my things. Maybe it wasn't my, you know, crowning moment. <laughs> Because when I read the comments on social, I was I was like, oh, uh oh. But um, I the, the comments were split. Half of them were so upset Thomas would do something to scare. Oh yeah, well, yeah, that, that, that was the number one thing. And then the other half were like, what was that goblin? What was that? <laughs> and I'm like, so I don't know if you caught the Halloween episode. Yes. But I put the goblin in the in the opening titles of the Halloween episode. Yes, you did. No, I, no, I did see that. That was my kind of little. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. tongue in cheek thing yeah. back to the audience. Um, but so you're right. Most folks were upset that he did that. He was doing this to his son. That was, and that's one of the things that makes why Matthew Atkinson and Henry Sam were great actors because he was doing things, and we felt so protective of this kid. It was right. like you guys really went there a couple of times. We were like, is he gonna like beat his kid? And so together? from a, from a PR standpoint, we were trying to put out photos of them, you know, behind the scenes. Like, see, they like each other. Henry's, you know. They get along. They're, it's just play. It's not yeah. like he knows. He knows it's just pretend. Yeah. Yes, and I mean, of course, I know that from working in business. But yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. You, I mean, I remember you guys were doing that. But it's like it just it was it means it was good. Oh and my god! Can I just say about that storyline when when you know the secret about Beth being alive? When we had that fan event, and then I had um, uh, a woman call me, and I, I don't answer the phones, but the phone was ringing. I thought, well, I'm going to answer this. Well, it was a fan from Pennsylvania who said, I'm not going to watch that show until she gets that baby back. And she was just going off for 20 minutes about, you know, people were so upset about it. I know, I know. I, trust me, I know, I know. You know. We had the fan event, and I saw all these fans. I'm like, Brad, I think you've got a winning storyline here because these people want to know. They want, they want Beth or hope to get her baby back. So it was, that was like, that was so much fun. Yeah. last year oh and the ratings showed it too i mean yeah. Clearly, yeah, was, you guys so were kudos to brad hair. for another like amazing secret yeah that's nothing so it was a very it was a very good no, very good storyline we were very every time i had to talk about the show i was very happy we were getting with excitement we were getting excitement to talk about it because it was and, and like you said about annika noel hats off to her for playing that like having to cry every day for oh. six months Poor, you know I told her, I said, what do you do? She goes, well, I drink afterwards. I said, of course, you drink afterwards. I mean, like, it's just like, I mean, she had to really pull the emotions out. And, and I said, we got to meet her, had her on our show, and she's so, you know, amazing, the person, cool. period. Cool. Um, but again, because I was, I was a Kim Matula fan, don't get me wrong, I was a big fan of hers. So but good. Annika won me over yeah. immediately. I told her, you won me over immediately. And she really did portray this whole story. Like, because she was done wrong. She was the done that one. She was the one in the dark. She's the innocent yeah. one out of all of this. Everybody did wrong to her. So she had to play that. She had to play when yeah. she's finding out who knew what. And I was like, oh, I was like, she did a great job. And another one that, you know, fingers crossed for a nomination. For yes. Her. So do you have you heard anything in terms of like, I know that they're not having a ceremony right now, clearly. Not yeah. a ceremony, but I know pre-nominations were out. I mean, are they going to do something online? I mean, I haven't heard anything. I don't know what they're going to do to. I know the voting ends uh, on Sunday is the right. last of the voting. Um, but I don't know about the, uh, you know, they, they haven't really said. It's just yeah, they said. I think so. ceremony. They may do something different yeah. down the line, but uh, yeah. So that's a shame because I, you know, it's really it's a it's 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 a it's a lot of fun to get together as a, an industry, and it's also you know the actors who work so hard to see them you know recognized for that that role. Well, I go. I do the red carpet at the end. He's always go to red carpet. Okay. My okay. friend Carolyn Hennessy is always the is the is the carpet host, and I'm always okay. talking to her. And I that's why that's why I met a lot of your people on the red carpet, and I see you were there. Uh, I love no, I love it. I love going to the Emmys. It's a fun thing out there in Pasadena. It's a it's a little hot sometimes, but you know I wear a nice little suit and I talk to stars. And I, I love it. I mean, it's a fun to see everybody together for one. And people and people when people win, it's just nice to see them afterwards how excited they are, and it's, yeah. it's a funny it's a funny event. It's a really funny event. I love it. Casey, thanks for being on the show. So nice meeting you. Like, this is, uh, it's really exciting to, you know, uh, get an opportunity to talk about my job, my, sh and the, and the, and the, and the, everybody, and the, the special and the Monte Carlo week. And I hope that, um, you know, we can have you come here and, uh, do a guest spot on the show too. Great. You guys heard it. You guys heard that. I do it. You guys heard that. So it's going to be Becoming Bold and Beautiful, which will be airing two parts on Monday the 27th and Tuesday the 28th. 
and then you have the episodes afterwards. You can see it before and then after, which is the smartest thing I think I've heard all day. I love that. Uh, so once that's on CBS, of course, local listings for that. Uh, here in Los Angeles, channel this channel to you and all that stuff. So anywhere else you find this. And um, and Bold and Beautiful, you can find, you can find all this. They have a Facebook page. They're all over the place. They're on Instagram. They're everywhere. Bold and Beautiful CBS. Um, I'm James Lai, James, Bone Beautiful there. I'm James Lai Jr. And this, and this podcast there <laughs> is everywhere where you can find podcasts and videos from YouTube to speaker.com to Deezer and Spotify. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere. You know, Casey, I'm everywhere. That's I, I know. And I know. You're <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I'm everywhere. And where can you find me? We're all James Lai Jr. just sold at James Lai Jr. and all social media uh, platforms. Everyone, please stay safe. Please stay sane. And let's all watch Bone Beautiful next week.